Hello, all you bronies and Pegasus. Welcome back to the NBS show. I'm your host, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. And joining you today is my cohort in reviewing, Norman Sanzo. Oh, chosen one! Oh, chosen one! Yes, indeed. And we have a special guest today to help talk about our topic. We have Twilight Genesis. You may call me Betty. And if these quotes aren't enough to tip you off, we're not reviewing a pony show today. We're doing something special. By a request of one of our Patreon supporters, we will be looking at one of the greatest nonsensical movies of all time, Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so Patreon support is Nemdragatorius. Thank you so much, buddy, for um, sponsoring this review because we talk a long game with this one. We, we talk about, oh, let's do this one, let's do this one, let's just find the time, let's just find the time. And he just got tired of our nonsense and said, here, do it. I want to hear what you think. Do it. Do it! <laughs> And the moral here, kids, is that if you want us to stop dancing around an issue, throw money at us. <laughs> That's a good lesson for the kids, right? Yeah, totally. Yes. Yes. <laughs> money. It's the get off your bum solution to everything. Yes. Oh, there you go. And so, if you haven't seen this movie yet, why not? But, but in any case, watch out because we will be getting neck deep into spoilers. But first, perhaps some general impressions. Mm. I would summarize this movie, but yeah, no. Yeah, no. Um, I, I think going scene by scene would be a bit too long because I think the movie is like about an hour, 40, almost two, probably. So yeah, I think we are going for discussions rather than scenes. But yeah, I, I think the uh, meta game for this one is to see who can make me laugh. Which, given given our past history, Norman, that's not really a challenge. Yeah, true. If we could get you to snort, I mean, you know, at recent conventions, I've helped people have a laughter snort, and that was pretty impressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try that one. <laughs> oh. But, but let's start. Get special guest first. Twilight Genesis. First off, when did you first see this movie? I. Don't exactly remember how old I was, but I was definitely in my young teens when I first saw this movie. And I absolutely thought it was great. I think it was already on TV by that point. I don't even remember when this movie came out, actually. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely my young teens, probably about 15. Because it, it wasn't well known down here until a few years after it was uh, made. But it, was, it sounds like something you very much enjoyed. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's at, almost everyone down here knows of it and loves it. At the very least, we quote it like no tomorrow when we remember it exists. How about yourself, Norman? When did you first see it? Um, I think for me, it was when around 2002 when the movie came out. But you have to remember that in the early days of Malaysia media, piracy was rampant. So, probably I think parents bought VCDs. <laughs> Back then we had VCDs instead of DVDs. So, bought VCDs of this movie and watched it. Um, totally nonsense if you really ask me. Like, back in the days, what is quality? But I, I think that is 10 and bought the DVD again just to rewatch it. But still, um, it, I got it when I was in my teens. Uh, I wouldn't say that I fully appreciated the movie. To me, it was a funny movie, but eh, it was still a movie. Back then, when you were a teen and you were more to video games, it was just eh, media. And what about you, Silver? Uh, I, I viewed this in my junior year of college. Got together with a bunch of friends for a movie day right at the start of the semester. Uh, or rather, school year. What year was and this, by the way? Plugged it in, and there's a, when you're old enough to know better. Mirror. Oh no! Actually, if it was my ju- if it was my junior year, that would have been 1997 Nin- through 98. Oh, Silver, this movie came out in 2002. No, 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 no. no sorry, that's I'm thinking of my high school <laughs> junior year. No, this would have been 2001. One? That's not possible. This movie came out 2002. That doesn't seem right because I know I saw it in college. I'm trying to remember my own college days. 
Uh, well, let's just say it's in college when the movie was, came out on DVD. It was. It must have been 2001, because, but it was on DVD at that point, which means they really rushed it through. Eh, probably three months later, six months later, probably. So yeah, I mean, understandable, but still, continue on. But anyway, we we all just gathered and they had this movie. I I'd, I'd heard of it, but I hadn't watched it yet, and it was just so bizarre. And so much fun. It was so mindless. Any, I think any professional critic would turn their nose up at this and say, it's, it's so lowbrow humor. It's, it's a complete farce of cinematography. And yet you get a bunch of college students together and they're quoting the whole thing for the rest of the year. <laughs> so much so that at, at year's end, we had another movie night and I had to bring it back out just so everyone could quote along for, with the scene where, uh, the love interest and the, and Betty are, Having their t- intense argument. Wee wee yeah. Wee 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 yeah. <laughs> See, now we're not getting you to laugh already. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's a, uh, fun fact: I rewatched it just today, just to get a grasp on the movie. Ooh. Well, I I rewatched it recently as well. I was having a, a bad time at work and was feeling sort of. Uh, uh, downtrodden. So I pop this in and I just watch it and all of a sudden I'm, I'm right back with my friends in college laughing at this absurdity, uh, just enjoying some of the stuff I missed the first time around. And so it's just a lot of fun. Now normally this is the part where we'd warn you all that we're going to spoiler territory, but as this is thematic, it's not so much, we will talk about certain events, but this isn't going to be a play by play. Go watch this movie though. It's worth it's worth a cheap laugh on the on an easygoing afternoon. Mm, true that. And fun fact, um, this movie was made on a budget of ten million, and it grows seventeen million. So yeah, you you could just imagine how quote unquote successful this movie was. Well, the the key to movies seems to be to do things on the, as cheap as you can to make as much money. That's why we had Blair Witch found footage videos movies for a while. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, yeah, grand grand old times. But here's here's the ultimate question to start with. Who's your favorite character? Twilight. It would have to probably be Tungy. <laughs> He's the least one of one of the characters that appears the least in the film, but is there the whole time. Tungy is fantastic. And it only has like one line that it repeats. It's just that that sound it makes and then it gives you the, the, the double click and the wink and it's fantastic. Gets me every time. <laughs> Just, I, I, I don't see how anyone could, could, can dislike Tungy. And it's, what a brilliantly masterful name. Just, <laughs> the, the, the best, the best name ever. Completely, it, you, you, you get the, the whole, whole image of his majesty from that name. <laughs> Not to mention the master's reaction to him. I said, my God, what is that thing? <laughs> As Norman <laughs> chuckles into his hands. <laughs> do, do I, are you serious? Oh, yeah, I was completely <laughs> serious. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is a tongue in cheek uh, comment. <laughs> Of course, also, although we get the yay yay, we also get her, uh, Tungy speaking French. Oh yeah, that, that last part. Ah, yes. That one part of the, towards the end of the film, where he, his secret power is revealed. And you need to open your mouth. <laughs> of course, I can't speak French, so I, I won't do a disservice to the language. Oh. But yes, the, the great power of Tungy. Sacre bleu. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Now, uh, Norman, if you can, if you can fit the words between the giggles, who is your favorite character? Uh, well, I, I'm gonna say, um, Master Pain or Master Petty. <laughs> uh, he, he's one of those villains where, how do I put this? He's one of those bad guys that you love to hate kind of deal, where he's, the original movie um called Tiger and Crane Fist was a masterpiece. Um the bad guy himself was pretty threatening and very scary. But in this, after the dub, after the, what they did to him, 
he's a lovable idiot. You can't help but just cheer him on. Uh, and uh, I think he made the movie. Most of the lines he says are priceless. Really, really priceless. Uh, what about you, Silver? I'm going to go with uh, the master and narrator. Oh. <laughs> uh, just because th- that gravelly voice of his... As he uh, as he's explaining, oh, the life of the chosen one. But then it gets even better when he starts narrating his own battles. Okay, so I had two options at this point. Roll to the side and take him out with a sweet kick or get a claw to the face. Should have gone with option one. Oh, uh, yeah, Master Tang is he's pretty damn funny. Pay no attention. Yeah, pay no attention to Wimplo. We purposely <laughs> trained him wrong as a joke. <laughs> oh, with the squeaky shoes. <laughs> now, of course, the 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 claim to fame in all this is that they were able to digitally edit in Steve Odenkirk into the movie and also some other characters. I mean, uh, as Master Payne is getting ready to. Throw down. He's got a jukebox guy dancing in the background, and the special effects at the time were not as sophisticated, but it looked pretty good in my eyes. Oh yeah, um, I have to agree. On a technical standpoint, this movie was not bad. Um, within the budget that they were given and all the special effects that were there, uh, most of it were kind of um, old school kind of uh, special effects. Like, um, superimposing a face onto another body and, um, doing green screen or blue screen in this scenario. It was pretty cool. The way that they did it was, to me, it's genius. Having a small budget, like 10 mil, and doing, just having fun with it. Like, you can clearly tell that they didn't really I won't say it's not fair to say they didn't really care, but you can see that they put in a lot of effort with the budget that they had and similar to how Power Rangers were made, like the TV series, not the movie, um, it's something similar to that. Like the whole movie is just what would happen if the Power Rangers movie were just dubbed of the Sentai and instead of um, filming new footage, nah, we just superimpose heads on bodies. It'll work, right? Well, to be honest... Until maybe like five years afterwards, uh, when someone brought the movie up to me, I didn't realize that this was made using an old movie and superimposing uh, images and characters' faces onto existing characters in the movie. I had no idea. Funny that you mentioned that, Twy, because um, at the start of the movie, they had a disclaimer that they used footage from a movie called Tiger and Crane Fist, also known as... Savage Killers. So, yeah, that was in the very beginning in, of the credits. So, yeah. It, they, I don't think they ever really put that part into the uh, the TV airings. Uh, probably. For the movie, which wouldn't surprise me, considering they, they tend to cut out like the very start and very end of a lot of things when they get aired in Australia. So I, I never actually saw that until I watched it on DVD years later. Or perhaps you just weren't paying attention. Stop ruining Kung Pao! Who <laughs> did? Uh... Yeah. 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 Wee, 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 wee. Eeny, meeny, miny, <laughs> mo. I wonder where my glove will go. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and the faces that they made. Oh, my God. Silver, carry us on. Well, I'm surprised none of us really did talk about Wimp Low as a, <laughs> a character. I mean, come on. Ah, my face to your foot style. I win. <laughs> yeah, I am bleeding, therefore I am the victor. <laughs> oh. I'm sure that makes sense to the planet you're from, but the flaw in your strategy is this is Earth. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> uh, I'm a man too, you know. I go pee pee standing up. <laughs> Oh, you guys are killing me. Oh, we're not, we haven't even gotten into the meat of the movie yet. That's, you ain't gonna live, Norman. 
Everyone say goodbye to Norman because this is his swan song on the on the NBS show. Oh. He'll die laughing. Well, if that's the case, you guys go that way. I'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> what are you giving you across the bow of a bungee cord? My ass. <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, one of the funnest things about uh, one of the funnest things about uh, this movie is that when they take the original, uh, the, uh, the, what do you say it was Crane and Tiger Fist, Savage Killers, mm-hmm. or Tiger and Crane Fist rather. Uh, it's the fun they have with the editing. Sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the special effects, but sometimes it's just the little jokes or acknowledgement of their own messing with it. My, one of my favorites is Master Payne saying, I am a magician. <laughs> Your shirt is now red. Now it is white. Oh. And, the, and, the, and the governor or the mayor, whoever's kowtowing to him, his, his clothing keeps changing and they just run with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, or that one scene where, <clears throat> uh, where in most Chinese martial art movies, Especially in the olden days where they beat the guy or the villain with a stick just to show how powerful he is. Like, they did that scene. Oh, like, to show him how powerful he is. And, yeah, okay, he's very powerful. And the chosen one, um, tried to emulate that. But gets the crap beaten out of him. <laughs> he said not to, he said not to stop until he gave us the signal. <laughs> whack, whack, whack. He moaned a few times. Was that a signal? <laughs> He did say something about throwing us all off. Oh, yeah. And pile on top of him. And Stephen Odenkirk had some of the best training scenes. I mean, <laughs> his emotional breakdown as he tries to figure out how to get Betty's uh, power points off his body. He just sort of runs off crying. <laughs> it's like, okay, so I know he's the hero, but really... But actually, there's a question. Mm. Favorite fight in this movie? Oh, oh, mm. um, Ooh. Uh, uh, Twilight. What? I'm putting you on the spot here. What? What was your favorite fight of all these? I'm gonna have to go. It was either the fight with Wimplo, <laughs> <laughs> or the fight uh, with Betty at the end. Those are both fun ones, especially pulling off those plugs and you see. Little chunks of Betty are missing. Ah! In a very distant third is the fight where he punches out the guy's stomach. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, that, that one's my favorite. Where, uh, well, actually, no. Second favorite. We'll follow up on that. But, Norman, mm. your favorite fight. Oh, I, I, my, my favorite fight would be the one at, near the beginning where he faces a samurai. Just because of how absurd that fight is. And just the fact of... Like, okay, you can interpret it multiple ways where the samurai throws down a smoke bomb and it just fizzles out because of the wind. So it's like, okay, what was that supposed to make you disappear? Or was it a reviving spell to revive all your comrades? In either case, it didn't work. Yeah, you know, no, the, the reviving spell works, but the chosen one was really good. He poked an eye out, 10 to be exact. <laughs> I do love this movie that normally the chosen one is the straight man. He's the one who uh, who is responding to all these idiots. Uh, what is it? Uh, master Tang mm. talking about uh, how his own master farted and a dog died. Oh, all right. I officially know more than I ever needed to know. <laughs> oh, Please stop. Uh, well, so you haven't answered your own question yet. Uh, well, at first I was going to say the, the stomach plug, but then, dang it, Norman, you you took... My favorite as well. I'm sorry. The battle with the samurai men and I need gopher chucks. <laughs> I know. The fact that a dog barks right as I said gopher chucks is just too perfect. Uh, you know what? Oh, that'd be my dog. Uh, I have no idea what he wants. Uh, I'm going to go check it out. He wants to be in a movie too. He wants gopher chucks. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the least amount of editing because this is just go. Exactly. Just roll with it. It's, it's fun. Oh, yeah. And, and of course, just seeing the chosen one, he's, he's beating all these people. It's, and he's just getting out more hardcore. Like, ah, 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 ah. And actually, you know, a vein bursts in his neck. And you're like, oh my gosh, is he okay? It's just too hardcore. 
Oh boy. Gross. But yes, the, the stomach plug fight is, uh, similarly, it's a very, very, very close second. Yeah. Especially once again, the colorful commentary of Master Tang. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but that's that guy's stomach plug. You think there'd be some organs in there or something? Uh, the narrator is probably the second best character. He has some of the best lines. Oh yeah, I, I found a, I found a, a quote. Like, crap man, look at that. It's like his stomach plug on the ground back there. You don't see that every day. I mean, there's, uh, that doesn't even make, uh, that doesn't even seem possible. If you think about it, with body organs, cartilage and bones, I mean, no, I'm not a doctor. Oh God, I can't even breathe the whole way through. Oh. <laughs> We're losing Norman. Want me to read it for you, Norman? No, no problem. Oh God, no, never mind. People who will get, it. they have just to, uh, they go watch, but, Oh wow, we 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 talking about scenes and whatnot. But after rewatching this one, like um, for me, I've rewatched this recently. Um, does it get a bit boring for you? Eh, and to, not for me. I'm, I mean, there's there's slowdown periods to be sure. Yeah, I mean, like um, what I meant to say was, um, does the movie really kick into you at the second half of the act, or was it go from beginning to end? Well, kind of combining our talk about favorite fights and, and slowdowns. Funny enough, the, the low point for me is the cow fight. It's ridiculous enough that when you're little or, or a teenager, it's amusing, but after watching it a few times, it's like, was this really necessary? Is, is this actually that good a scene? It seems like they did it mostly so they could get a Matrix time parody in place, which I found Utterly ridiculous. Oh god. Oh, I see what you did there. But, um, honestly, when I look at that scene and think about that scene, um, this is in the day where YouTube is not prevalent and 3GPs on your phone were the boss. So whenever somebody sends a funny video through your phone and people saw that, that was kind of the well, absurd, but kind of the in thing during those years of media. And I think that what kills it for me. But in all honesty, that scene was, well, at least we know where most of the budget went to. But, yeah, uh, yeah the, it, you just sort of knew they're doing this just to be silly. We've gone past satire just into absurdity. Mm-hmm. Sort of dial it back afterwards. And I think that scene there was, yeah, I, 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 for me, that was like, eh, I could, I could have left this on the cutting room floor. It was nothing missed. The start of that scene though, be- before he reaches the cow, I noticed when I watched it recently, and by recently, I mean 1 a.m. last night, mm. there, there is actually one of the floating pyramids in the background as he's walking up the hill. At the start of that scene, I did never notice that before. Yeah, I, I did notice that on the second watch, which is for me would be probably four or oh, five p.m. today. <laughs> I I saw it a couple of weeks ago. I it was still fresh in my memory, but uh, we haven't even we haven't even talked about uh, Ling. Oh God! Who? <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the things they did shoehorned romance interests are usually very passive and don't really contribute to the story and here's Ling just starting off as just this annoying little character and then all of a sudden going this crazed psycho <laughs> the, you broke a thermometer in my hand <laughs> <laughs> this is Ling don't worry she's shy at first but she warms up to you pretty quickly Quick flash. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> oh. And of course, the scene where she's like, "Oh, I want your chosen one." Close to the floor. Oh, but I don't. Want, but I'm not sure. Close, just fly back on. And the chosen one is just looking at her like, "Why are you doing this to me?" <laughs> yeah, on off, on off, on off. Oh wow. The chosen one, after she's lit his hands on fire, put them in lemon juice, <laughs> rub mercury through them. You have helped me reach the next level. And here I was starting to think you were just a, <laughs> a sadistic psycho. That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, wow. Uh, Ling is just nuts. And, oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, I don't know what to say about Ling. Ling is interesting. That's all I have to say. And then we find her father. Wee-oo, wee-oo. Oh, no. <laughs> Master Poe. Oh, God. No, Master No, that's it. Let me know. Let me know if you see a radio shack. <laughs> Why? <sighs> Why? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, 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 when, when Master Doe first appears, wait, you're not ready. Who are you? <laughs> Ling's father. Wee, oh, wee, oh, wee, oh, wee. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh. Uh, favorite line for me would be, I have a mortal wound. Where? <laughs> does, it, does it hurt? Oh, pretty much around the big bloody spot. <laughs> hey, yes, man. Master, Master Tang is uh, helping massage the wound. Okay, that's really not helping. <laughs> nah, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, this was a couple of years too soon, but I kept expecting, I need an adult. <laughs> I am an adult. <laughs> uh, Although, I'm looking through the, this quote list, and of course, here's one from Ling. I'm a teeny tiny horny honey. <laughs> Words I never thought Silver Quill would say. <laughs> Well, this is a special, <laughs> special episode. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wow. Well. Uh, Maybe I can fit that into a review of, uh, of, uh, oh, Big Macintosh and oh, Sugar Bell. Oh, what have I done? Oh, no. I, I think we, we've, all, all of the, the adult jokes for that episode of LP <laughs> have, have been run through the dirt by DWK. Oh, God. Probably. Oh, wow. Well. Probably. Yeah. Oh, God. But, but in any case, we're, we're talking about Kung Pao. And the funny thing is, like, you can, you can go on a quoting rampage with this. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're just bouncing all over the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we haven't talked about, we haven't talked about the woman with three breasts. No, yet. no, no. And no, again, there the, are, uh, correction. Never thought you'd hear. Correction. It's a single breast. Is it single? I thought yes. it was three. I think there's a ver- I, I I feel like there was a version of it with three breasts at one point. No. I originally I thought it was a three breasted chick as well. And then I watched it and I'm like, no, it's a one breasted chick. Hmm. And I kinda of feel like I got ripped off. <laughs> yeah, we gotta keep abreast of these changes. Wow wow. <laughs> oh wow. Oh you. Uh but no nah, uh, somehow I do remember the insert character here having Tree, but I think we were kids and we don't really know how breast works back then. Oh. There were real boobs at the time. I was in college, believe me. <laughs> I knew. Oh, you. <laughs> uh, but still, <clears throat> uh, back on topic. Back on topic. It's almost Monty Python in its levels of absurdity, especially at the end where you find <laughs> out what the evil council really is. Aliens. <laughs> French, French aliens. aliens. <laughs> Oh, God. Actually, now that I think about it, all they needed was John Cleese at the top of a pyramid. So, you silly Chinese, but somehow English-type persons. Wow. I blow my nose at you. I'm not in your general, general, general direction. direction. <laughs> oh, God. Now go away, or I'll taunt you a second time. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> wow. But because this movie is just... It's being so honest. It's saying, I'm a, compl- I'm a complete... Uh, farce of a story, just absurdities all around. Somehow escalated to alien invading French and hiring a Chinese master. Uh, yeah, I'll run with it. Yeah. I'm down. It doesn't even... I'm jiggy. It doesn't even seem ridiculous. Like, by this point, you're already invested in the story, and when they reveal the main villain, the evil consul to be French aliens, you let that sink in for a bit. Like, you're okay with this, like, oh, okay. Only to be defeated almost instantaneously by Tungy. Oh, God. The most important character in the whole movie. Oh, the whole, Tungy is the MacGuffin. The whole world is, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? He, he's the center point. He's the MacGuffin of the entire movie. He's so important. But, so very important. But if you really look at it, right, like, if you really, really, really look at it, he doesn't do anything. Like, 
you have the main guy, uh, the chosen one. He trains really hard. He does a lot of things. And you, you really see him do stuff even when he was an infant. Like, an infant. He does kung fu when he was a baby. And... He was born with it. I know. We wouldn't see another instantly gifted person until Kung Fury. Oh, God. Uh, That's the uh, Kung Fury. We talked about that one. That was so glorious. If only I could combine movies. Kung Pao versus Kung Fury. Double fists of pain. Oh, God. That would be glorious. Oh, wow. And both movies, I noticed, has this ridiculous over-the-top thing going for it like we know we're a movie that we're not supposed to be taken seriously so just enjoy yourself with how absurd we can get and having well um, in Kong Pao's case uh, westerner being in a Chinese film or being in a Chinese Kung Fu movie doing most of the talking doing most of the fighting quote unquote being the main star while Kong what did I say Kung Fu Kung Pao first I forgot you said Kung Pao first, right, and right. then Kung Fury is more the special effects. Yeah, and also the absurdity of, like, okay, um, Hitler shooting a gun through a mobile phone, and somehow that gets directed to the police station that he's calling. What? <laughs> What's indeed? Like, suspension of disbelief, please, wait outside. I don't know. I I, th- <clears throat> I think some parts were actually very... Uh, true to life. Case in point, this rather insightful quote from Master Tang. At that moment, the Chosen One learned a valuable lesson about iron claws. <laughs> they hurt like he- they hurt like crap, man. <laughs> oh wow! <coughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh. Now, of course, we're having fun with this, but I think it, it warrants reading a few reviews, mm. uh, quotes from, uh, from various professional reviewers. Entertainment Weekly, a process comedy chop suey. Let's see here. From the Austin Chronicle, Oda Kirk's latest exercise in what I like to call the cinema of screechy hell suck. <laughs> what? <laughs> Movie Eye. Kung Pao seems like some futile c- concoction that was developed hastily after Oderkirk and his fellow movie makers got through crashing a college keg party. <laughs> uh, Chicago Tribune, not since Freddy Got Fingered has a major release been so painful to sit through. What? Mm. And then my personal favorite, from Cinema and Senna, and now mi superenenda caso <laughs> descubrirse que este filme for realidazo Por un grupo de adolescentes bebezados durante de churrasco da escola. Sí. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And these are all the professional critics. Yeah. Uh, so like, like, like I say, it's one of those times where I think like the popular, the intended audience, people are just looking for a fun, silly time. And then professional critics who either have to watch like 10 times more movies than your average Joe Mm -hmm. just can't get into the mood as much. Oh, well, if you think about it, like how reviewers, well, professional reviewers handle things and how the regular Joe Schmo like us handle things is a bit different because when they do reviews, they have to look at it at a critical eye even more than the regular person. Like they have to put that college degree or uni degree to its, well, put it to work and write something really, really professional. And to like something like this and give it praise would condemn them to a world of mockery from their peers. Like us, we don't really care as long as the movie's funny. Like, for example... Tell me why so's the room. When you watch it, you'll be asking yourself, why am I watching this movie to begin with? But once you get through it, you'll say, oh my god, what have I gotten myself into? 
Why are they playing football in tuxedos? What? But in the end, you'll enjoy it. And throw spoons at the theater. You'll spend the next six months going, Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, I did not hit her. I did not. <laughs> I haven't even seen that movie yet, actually. It's super popular down here, and I have yet to see it. Oh, you should totally see it before you go watch The Disaster Artist. Oh, God. Uh, but Kung Pao. But Kung Pao. I mean, but basically this just highlights. I don't know if I'd agree. You shouldn't review something with fear of how your peers are going to react. I mean, you want to be respectful of your peers, but they shouldn't dictate your thoughts. My hat's off to people who saw this movie and saw it for what it was rather than what they thought it should be, which is not always the easiest thing to do. Yeah, and honestly, to me, when I see this movie now as an adult who has done a few movie reviews, can see it in, oh, I see what they're doing with this movie. It's a parody of olden day uh, kung fu or Chinese kung fu movie dubs. One of my favorite thing in this movie, or, or it sets up how this movie is going to be played, is when... Wimplow asks one of the students, like, who's the new guy? And the guy flaps his mouth. Like, he flaps his mouth for a few seconds before answering, I don't know. Like, what? <laughs> what? Oh, I remember that. That's... They go out of the way to, to make the, uh, the dubbing as stereotypical as possible to the point where even all the characters that speak who are new characters uh, by, done by actors such as uh, Steve I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Od- Odekirk yeah, the, cho- the chosen one, the one boot lady they, they're both completely new characters that so they had the film but when they did the filming they just spoke random nonsense Really? and then they dubbed the actual lines over the top of it so that they had the whole uh, a, a bad dubbing appearance. Really? Uh, did that happen? Really? Yeah, I, I, uh, they I, happened. I, you, you can watch it on the DVD. Oh. There'll be a special feature where it has the movie, but with all the what they really said. Oh. So you get all the original uh, Chinese dialogue, and then when it gets to the points where it has the chosen one and the one boob lady, it actually has all of the random nonsense they were actually speaking instead of the lines. <laughs> oh, wow. you got to give credit where credit's due, man. That takes a lot of dedication. Well, they they know the look they were trying to go for, and they were, they had no qualms about being silly about it. Which, hey, I can, I can roll with that. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'm totally down and hip and jiggy with it, yo. <laughs> yeah, word. Speaking of the the one boob lady, I saw I saw a picture. I was like, oh yeah. Somehow I always just thought it was just three. Mm. I guess I've seen triple. <laughs> now I think you're thinking about um, Total Recall <laughs> or Star Wars. Star Wars was he? One of Jabba's dancers uh, essentially had six breasts. Uh, I don't know what to say. Well then, Ooh. Ooh, I, I just go back and watch Star Wars again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I love that little squeal. I think I broke Norman the same time and we're making him giggle. But if we're talking about favorite fights once again, how about Tungy versus the one boob lady's tongue? Oh, wow. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. That very <laughs> random doing. moment in the middle of a fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I've never seen a CGI eyes and mouth so happy. <laughs> Gives whole new meaning to tonguey. Oh, wow. And it sends you to a tongue lashing. <laughs> oh, God. Is this how a French kiss is supposed to work? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> this is the French kiss that doesn't surrender. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> now, d- despite the, the one boob lady's promise about sequels, obviously we, this really was meant to be just sort of one and done, I think. Um. But would you watch a Kung Pao sequel? We're in this era of nothing it seems to be original anymore. Well, Silver, um, funny that you say sequel because, um, according to, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure how legit this is because it's from Wikipedia, but in 2005, it was announced that a sequel is currently in the works with 
Odeker returning to write and direct. In but 2015. Yes. Y- yeah, we're, we're more than 10 years out. I, I feel that Wiki, either the facts changed or Wikipedia hit the bottom. Uh, probably, but I don't know. I mean, um, I'm checking the reference here and yeah, I'm going to click on the reference here and see where it goes. But it says it, ret- it was retrieved on December 21st, 2016 uh, on a website called flickeringmyth.com. So probably... I wouldn't mind an, a little bit of absurdity, even if it's another sequel. Just a little bit of fun absurdity. We could use that right now. Oh yeah, I mean, with movies nowadays being super uber serious, being very, very too overly gritty and too serious, it can get really tiring. And you know what? I'm really excited for the Hitsman bodyguard. Yeah, the the satire of uh, of uh, the bodyguard's bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. It seems like a really entertaining movie, especially when you get Samuel L. Jackson and um, who's Deadpool again? Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, especially if you get those two. Yeah, most entertaining. I would suggest go watching the trailer, but I would highly recommend watching the trailer if you are of age. That means eighteen or seventeen or above. Yes, we have to be, we have to be so super serious about this, folks. Watch it when you're old enough to appreciate the fine and refined humor of a woman going, wee, 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 <laughs> and lighting a guy's ha- hands on fire. I spanked you as a baby, and I'll spank you now. That's not a word. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I'd have to say Master Bay's probably got most of the really good lines in the movie. That's what I said, Mr. Betty. <laughs> she, Mr. Betty is, wow, my favorite character of the movie. Like, he is adorable and scary and idiotic. All in one. All in one. Well, it's I funny. thought you looked familiar. Sorry, I didn't recognize you without crap in your pants. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh, wow. You, you can't forget the product placement. A Taco Bell, Taco Bell. Product placement with Taco Bell. Uh, in Chiritos. <laughs> uh, well, to be honest, that, that seems tame by comparison now when if you compare it to something like uh, Superman, Man of Steel. Oh, how come? Well, no, what was it? Superman where he's like breaking through an IHOP, uh, knocking over Dennis. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Chris, Krispy Kreme in the new Power Rangers movie. Uh, oh, Lord. Yeah, but that one I can accept because <laughs> uh, you know what? No, no comment, but I highly enjoyed that Power Rangers movie. Was it this year, by the way? It needed more of the theme song. Uh, yeah. Yes, it was this year. And, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I was less a fan myself, but I'm, I wasn't the right audience. Uh, but, of course, you could, o- you could always bring things back on track with just a quick word out. When you girls are done kissing, <laughs> I've got some ass kicking for you. <laughs> Oh. <clears throat> so on he walked, and sometimes drove, and occasionally partied all night with the desert creatures. Uh, mm-hmm. mm. oh. oh, wow. Okay. Oh, my favorite one. I'll take a pound of nuts, shopkeeper. That's a lot of nuts. <laughs> That'd be four bucks, baby. You want to fry through that? <laughs> he just left with some nuts. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, my nipples look like milk duds. <laughs> uh, and that's for... Oh, yeah. The intermission. Yeah, that's for the intermission part. Oh, God. No, I'm not even going to... Yeah, in- intermission. I've got some yellow... No, 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 no. And it's non-dairy. <laughs> no, God, no. Uh, but Silver, uh, where do you want to go with this? Where, 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 what's, what's next? Well, I... I feel like we've gone as far as we can. It is just simply, you could quote this thing for hours on end. You could talk about the reaction. You could talk, you could compare it to uh, everything else that is in cinema right now. But it is this wonderful uh, microcosm of humor and lowbrow comedy, slapstick, uh, and maybe just a little bit of highbrow when you look at the the technique they use to change one the tone of an entire movie mm. oh i just remember something uh you guys remember when master 
Tang was injured and the chosen one was there and sees him going eh, and he goes to see uh, Ling and she goes eh, and goes to see Dog. Suddenly the master's alive and um, he thinks, oh, everybody's alive. That means Whiplo goes to see Whiplo like dead with flies flying around. <laughs> It's like, oh. The oh. best part is he takes the dog and leave and Ling with him when he leaves. He leaves Master Tang there <laughs> and it doesn't get referenced again until the bloopers in <laughs> during the credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's revealed Master Tang is still there. They just left him there and a hawk is starting to eat him. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't funny, guys. He's like a predator or something. That's not a word. <laughs> And yet we're laughing. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh, wow. I just thought of something that I forgot because I laughed. Oh, God. But I think at, th- at this point, I think we've said all we can say about this wonderfully absurd movie. Mm-hmm. Stuff that uh, stuff that a professional filmmaker might roll their eyes and feel their, be- their craft is being discredited. But for so many, it's just a fun... Uh, there are movies where it is okay just turn your brain off and say... This is just for giggles. Let's let's have some fun. Mm, and I'm surprised you would say something like that, Silver, because I, I thought you were the advocate for um, never turning off your brain when watching a movie. Well, I can I can view this in different ways. I mean, there is sort of just I don't question the logistics. I don't question how the guy's stomach plug <laughs> isn't killing him. It's when people say it's a kids' show. Turn off your brain. It's like whoa, whoa. Just because it's aimed at a young audience doesn't mean you should automatically turn off your brain. But this one, it's inviting, a movie should invite you to say, yeah, we're incredibly absurd. Please join us in this fun nonsense. Mm-hmm. And yeah, to me, like, like I mentioned before, after rewatching this, after getting a few, um, reviewing, um, credits under my belt, I can appreciate this movie for what it's done and the tactics it used to make the movie. Would I recommend this movie to people who have not watched this movie yet? Totally yes, if you can rent it. Uh, would I say buy it? Only if you really, really enjoy the movie. It's one of those things where if you don't enjoy the movie, you'll be thinking, why did I waste my money? If you do, it'll be a proud collection on your shelf. I bought it just because I had seen it twice. I was like, yeah, I want this. Yeah. Oh, not to mention the soundtrack, guys. The soundtrack was pretty good too. Oh yes, any of any of Master Betty's fight scenes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's talking about big butts. He beats people because <laughs> he listens to it. <laughs> mm. Oh wow! Well. <laughs> so I think I think we're at a good place for final thoughts. Mm. So, uh, Charlie Genesis, what are your th- closing thoughts on this movie? It's it's a good movie. I think it's one of those movies where, as you said, you, you turn your your brain off and you sit back and then you enjoy it, even if you've seen it a few times and some of the laughs are starting to to wear off. It's still got enough to it that you could probably keep watching this for for years and years. It's definitely something that I say most people should see at least once. Totally agree with that. Norman, you've been giggling through this thing. I imagine you have a good uh good grasp on what you your thoughts? I like I mentioned before, um this is a movie that everyone should catch. I would guarantee that you would enjoy it, but you get a good chuckle out of it. And if you don't like it, well, probably this movie was not meant for you. But if you do like it, then that's awesome. It The comedy here is... <clears throat> how do I put this? Yes, now I remember what the, the, to say. Um, the comedy here is similar to um, a bridge shows like Dragon Ball A Bridge, You Go Your Bridge, and so on. It's where taking an original content and mushing and squishing it to make something new. And this is the movie for that. Like, if you really enjoy parodies, you'll probably enjoy this movie because it is chock full of insane dialogue choices that they pick. And one of the fun things I noticed in this movie that they don't use any memes. Um, and by that I mean, uh, well, not really, but... 
uh, they don't use any uh, pop culture references for this movie. Uh, I'd have to argue against that. Taco Bell, Radio Shack, he at one point Master Tang starts rambling about NSYNC. Those could be argued to be pop culture references. There's just very few of them. Plus, Betty's fighting soundtrack. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Well, um, okay, true, but I'll counter-argue with, okay, uh, Radio Shack is product placement, um, Taco Bell is product placement, and, well, NSYNC could be a pop culture reference and whatnot, but still, the things that they say in this movie it doesn't get old. Like, it doesn't get old fast, if you know what I mean. But still. Well, isn't Radio Shack out of business now? Really? I thought they're still alive. No? I think Radio Shack's been gone for like five years. Wow. So, so I, I would say that it's both product placement and a pop culture reference. You can, you can be both with mixed results, I think. Mm, probably. But still, um, I would say that <clears throat> this movie is full of quotable moments. Like, throughout this whole review or discussion that we're having, we have just been quoting the movie from start to beginning. Like, I'm checking the clock here, and it's about 57 minutes, and most of those are me laughing and you hearing quotes. And Yes, it's good times. <laughs> yes, and yeah, I would say that watch this with a friend with the same sense of humor as you. Because you will both enjoy a really awesome movie. And yeah, those are my thoughts. Silver, what about you? Well, I don't know if I can add much more. It is, a, it is a fun satire. I think especially fans of martial arts movies will look at this and say, yeah, this is kind of making fun of everything we've, that I enjoy. But at the same time, it's not mean spirited. It's not really saying, look at this. Whoever watches this is so dumb. <laughs> as there are some very scathing satires out there. This is more just have a good laugh at yourself. And it's an invitation to just have a, have a little joke at something you might really enjoy. Or as someone who's only just familiar with the tropes, you know, from pop culture and whatnot, even then you can just have a laugh uh, at what they present and how they, like you say, with the abridged series, how they completely change the tone and feel of a previous movie with just enough intrusive effects. <laughs> yeah. And if there is another sequel, I will gladly look forward towards it. Yep, same here, same here. Oh, wow. Oh, um, just to pad time, um, has any of you guys here seen the Disaster Artist trailer? No, no, I haven't. Oh. I have. Oh, oh, uh, Twi, you should go watch it if you can. And also, by the way, you should totally go watch The Room. Time, Tommy Swiso, The Room. You should go watch it. Ah, uh, I, a funny story with this one. I think it was two weeks ago, Silver, when I talked to you about this one and asked, was it this week or two weeks ago? Something like that. It would have been two weeks ago, I think. I saw it just after you mentioned it. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, I asked you to watch it and you think highly of it because, well, we both seen the room and it was pretty awesome. And I asked a friend of mine to go watch it. And I think last Wednesday, no, Thursday, me and him hang out for dinner. And I asked him, have you watched The Disaster Artist? And he says, no, I don't think I have. And I told him, you know what? I pull out my phone, open YouTube, type in Disaster Artist. And played it for him. And he got a chuckle out of it. And that moment when Tommy got the line right, he was wooing and cheering. And when he did that, the trailer at the same time did the same thing too. And he exploded with laughter. So yeah, that was a really awesome trailer. And so the the art of satire is not dead, mm. but it's changing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some people have wondered if good... With with all the, well, actually, I, I guess there is one final question. Sorry, I too may be padding. Mm -hmm. Compare this movie to say a disaster movie or epic movie. You know, all these other movies that are trying to spoof. Why does this one work and others don't? Let's change that. Norman, what are your thoughts on that? That's a really good question because I had this discussion with a friend recently about why do parodies or satire movies nowadays don't 
work while back in the day. So you got shows like Airplane, um, what you call this, uh, other things done by people. I forgot the movie call again of Hot Shots and so on. Why do those movies work while movies like Disaster Movie or so on that don't? And I think it could be the tone of the movie and how serious the actors or the writers are taking the movie. Because if you take Airplane, for example, um, it was a movie about a pilot who is afraid of flying because of a certain accident. And the lead, the pilot, who loves his girlfriend who is taking flight, has to get on board to well show how much he loves her. And I think that's the base line for the movie. And now you insert some obscurity about stuff. While movies like Disaster Movie, you get the artists or you, you get just, okay, let's put in this scene from this movie, you put this scene from that movie, and yeah, we just put in everything together, anything that's referential in today's media, and yeah, we get a movie. And you're not really invested in it. That's what I think. Charlie Genesis, your thoughts? I just find that a lot of the more modern spoof movies, like Epic Movie, they they just feel like they try too hard. They they try and parody too many things uh, and use in too many pop culture references. And I can I can see, especially with how prevalent the internet and things like memes are these days, that any new ones are definitely at risk of becoming just oversaturated with as many things thrown in as once that it just stops being funny and becomes more like a like you're just shifting through a really bad 4chan post. <laughs> Whereas all the movies like this, uh, like Kung Pao, it was just done for the fun of it. They didn't take the whole thing super seriously. And they, they didn't keep trying to put in as much as they could to make as many funny moments, which ultimately has ended up with the, the move, the, not a lot of the jokes have lasted as long, but when they, when the movie first came out, it was hilarious the whole way through. And it's only like now, over 10 years later that like we're still getting laughs out of it, but not all the jokes are as good. Not all. True. And I do have to say that the writing for Kung Pao it's not solid, but the jokes, they hit hard, like a Mack truck. Some of the new movies also, they feel a bit more predictable. Like, you're expecting something absurd, whereas watching Kung Pao, you're not quite sure what to expect. Are, are they actually going to do something sort of serious? Like, are we going to have a fight, even as, as absurd the fights are, as the fights are? Or are we just going to get just this bizarre doubling of dialogue that just makes no sense and goes completely off the center for like two minutes before coming back to what it should be. Oh, yeah. Silver, what about you? Well, I'm going to somewhat echo your thoughts, guys. It, with with epic movies and scary movies and all these other parody things, it feels like a checklist, like they're just moving between points, uh, but not really setting up a story. It's like they won't commit to one path. They're just saying, oh, if we string all these together, then people will laugh and they'll say, hey, I got that reference. They'll be like Steve Rogers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true that. And I think that's what most of the satire movies of today is missing. Like, they don't have that proper narrative. Like, okay, to in this day and age where uh, satire is done on YouTube, it's kind of hard to create a proper satire movie where it's not been done before. For example, uh, Silver, you posted a YouTube link of um, Star Wars with Tommy Why So, and I've seen that one before, and it is phenomenal. It is really, really good. But I only just discovered it last night, so... <laughs> to, to, to. <clears throat> but still, it's really... <laughs> it's really good, it's really awesome, and yeah, um, in... Nowadays, if somebody were to do a movie parody, probably they would use this. And yeah, just because of one funny joke that they want to tell, they create a whole movie 
And that's the only funny joke in the movie. And that's about it. While nowadays, like I mentioned before, YouTube's available, proper editing, nice editing work, you get gold. Also, I guess it's worth noting that with the uh, with the parody movies we're not so fond of, they tend to spoil all the good jokes in the trailers. Yeah, and yeah, and I I think the stigma of parody movie nowadays is kind of there. Like people, like most film go movie goers are kind of turned off by those kind of movies nowadays. Well, something to consider because even if it's a movie that invites you to turn your brain off. Sometimes even that invitation just doesn't land. You just say, yeah, I can't. You're not giving me the right kind of humor to just accept the absurdity. So uh, I, I sort of derailed us from closing thoughts. So, Norman, I believe it's your turn on closing thoughts? I think I already gave my closing thoughts. I said this movie was awesome and you should go watch it. Like something too similar like that. And you, Silva? And me, well... My closing thoughts is it's just a lot of fun. It's something to lift your spirits when you're in a in a down state. It's something that you don't need to take super serious, and it asks you not to take it super serious. Uh, it's even having fun with itself. Mm. And so some people can make that jump. Others will decline the invitation. It always will vary from person to person, but better to try and make a decision for yourself. So I heartily recommend it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And well, um, I think that's the end of said discussion. Or well, yeah, it's more of a discussion rather than a review. We all like it, so yeah, that, that's my point by then. But yes, um, I think that's the end of said discussion. Yes, indeed. But Norman, we have enjoyed this diversion from the poniness, but I believe that next week we will return to form. Ah, yes, that is true. And next week, we will be getting back to ponies with Season 7, Episode 7, Parental Guidance. And whew, that is... Hmm, that one, oh boy, whew, that is something to consider to talk about. Hmm, wow. Oh boy, whew, I can tell you're already setting the stage for this, Norman. It's quite intimidating. Yep, and you know what? I... There's no way for me to go at it without being frustrated, being embarrassed, being cringed. So, yeah, if you guys have seen the episode, just wait for a review and hear what you have to say. And at the same time, too, since uh, conventions are on the way and stuff, I'm a bit worried with how we're going to present it. So, yay! <laughs> well, have no fear. We... We, sh- we at the NBS show shall always persevere. And we have talented people like Twilight Genesis to come in and join and help us out. Yes. Indeed. Yes. And bring the Tim Tams and the cider. <laughs> yeah, Tim Tams. A local of Australia. Really, really tasty. I've not, I don't think I've ever had it. Oh. You'll have to come down to Australia then sometime, Silver Quill, because they are the best. Mm-hmm. Especially with coffee. The best around. Nothing gonna get you down when you're best. <laughs> but anywho, um, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. And with every support, you'll get full access to deleted contents, um, exclusive content, and also you'll get um, first dips on the review and discussion podcasts. And also a huge thank you from me. Uh, and talking about thank yous, I like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nendrogatorio, Starstream, Master of Leg, and also Jeffrey. Thank you, y'all, for the support. And for today's discussion, I I like to really, really give a huge thanks to Nem. Why can I say? We've been talking a lot of things about this one, wanting to do it, and we finally managed to do it. Thank you very much, my friend. Like, just a huge thank you. Thank you for throwing money at us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will please I, throw more. Uh, well, I, yes, th- this is a good strategy. I like this strategy. I, did, I didn't mean it that way. Oh gosh! I kid, I kid. I, it's I also the borrow good. said strategy. Oh god! Yeah, I, I need money. I have a YouTube channel. Oh gosh! <laughs> I can make it work. Not as good though. <laughs> oh god! Uh boys. But anywho, silver. Um, I, I think it's time to, well, uh, head out. 
Yes, it is time for us to go forth and enjoy until we see you guys next time on the NBS show. So thank you for watching. I am the Silver Quill. And I am Master Betty. I am Twilight Genesis. And we're saying, Wee, wee, wee! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am bleeding, therefore I am the victor. <laughs> we'll see you again. There's no code to end this. Everything's so great. We, I think we all use the code. Oh, I got one. You go there. I go home. <laughs> that one I'd have to watch yet again just to catch that one. There's always a new quote to realize. Mm-hmm. Indeed.